With wins in states including California, Hillary Clinton officially secured the Democratic nomination for president. Meanwhile, some Colorado officials, including Governor John Hickenlooper, joined others in condemning Donald Trump's attack on an Indiana judge claiming bias based on his Mexican heritage. Patty, every time we think it's, this is going to get goofier, it breaks the record, so it's, it's not even worth keeping track of that part anymore. But we did see Colorado officials getting involved in the fray, among many others. They weren't, uh, they weren't alone in this. Both with the Trump side, it was easy to forget the fact that major history was made. We have a woman at the top of a major party ticket for president. Um, I don't want to bypass that either. That's a major historical moment from all of these issues. Take your pick. Well, first of all, I don't know why you are, you've been hosting this show, because your family, if I understand it, came from Italy, That's Gizzuti, true. which means you're not an American, that, the, well, and you probably <laughs> shouldn't be here asking these questions. You know, this Trump, <laughs> and much less you're not a woman, so I don't know why you're talking about that either. Yeah, yeah, this Trump <laughs> issue is crazy. It is crazy that he is making this stand on his own lawsuit so it's not like we're acting very presidential there it's his own personal lawsuit it gives you a very good clue of how he's going to handle the judiciary if he ever should become president and because a man from indiana happens to have a surname that could be that is latino he has a conflict of interest because this man wants to build a wall it's so bad and he will not apologize and he's sending out all his apologists who are making it even worse um, it's really, I think, his biggest blunder so far. Not a huge surprise that politicians are weighing in about it because, just as I did, how can you not talk about it? It is really one of the things that is so idiotic, it's impossible not to recognize it. On the other hand, it's amazing how many younger women don't even, or younger men probably, who've lived with women's equality, who know, who assume women can have careers, women can run political, off, run for political office and win, that they don't see that this is a really groundbreaking moment, that there is a woman running for president, she's made, she will be the Democratic nominee, might even name a women, female vice presidential nominee. I mean, it's a truly a great moment in that case for history. That doesn't mean she's necessarily going to be everyone's choice. Right. Uh, David, uh, we obviously have a lot of things to talk about here, both on the on the Hillary side and on the Trump side. But locally, I think there's been Republicans. Uh, I've seen Mike Kaufman. We've seen others who have been forced to take a stand on this particular issue with with the judge in Indiana. Is this going to be a turning point for candidates to kind of decide, hey, I'm with this guy or I'm not with this guy? Yes, a, a time for choosing, as Ronald Reagan accurately said in the 1964 campaign, and good for the choice Kaufman is making. It's scandalous that Colorado Christian University is running a Twitter campaign to cajole Trump to speak at their event. This falsely teaches CCU students that character and the Christian virtues are unimportant. Unlike talented women of Colorado, such as Madeleine Albright or Condoleezza Rice, Mrs. William Jefferson Clinton achieved her power the old-fashioned way through advantageous marriage, like Queen Jezebel. Neither big baby nor Mrs. William seek the constitutional office of President of the United States. They would not faithfully execute the laws because they, as they've shown for decades, believe that the laws are for, are for little people. They are anti-constitution nominees in the un-American, Latin American tradition of Peron, Chavez, Somoza, and other strongmen. The notion that people must choose between the evils of El Caudillo or La Caudilla is false consciousness from the great deceiver. Now that's I'm talking about analysis. If you're going to go with you know Latin American names, that well, well done, David. I don't say I agree or disagree, but that, uh, very well delivered. Eric, when I look at the um, the Trump point, a part of me thinks that we're seeing some um, fantastic marketing because all this time, even around this table, we're talking about the, his whole opinion about a judge in Indiana, and we're not talking about the lawsuit over th th that there's been thousands of people bilked <laughs> from Trump University. It's this classic magician thing. If, if if I go off on this guy, don't forget the fact that these the millions of people were were built by this organization that I ran. Um, do you do you sense a, a a marketing three card Monty here? I don't know that he stepped into it deliberately, <laughs> but I think once he stepped into it, yes, he has embraced it. That has been his whole track record throughout this campaign, throughout the primary with the 16 other Republican candidates. Basically, it's been a strategy of if I can consume all the oxygen 
no matter whether it's positive oxygen or often negative oxygen, it is all the oxygen, and that's all anyone is talking about. And once again, uh, we have seen it over the last week. Patty made reference to, you know, this was maybe his worst faux pas yet. And we've said that so many, I, you know, I don't disagree with her, but we have said that so many times, and there have been so many examples of this is the new low, this is the disqualifying moment, and none of them have disqualified him. I mean, he's still here standing. He still has a tough road to hoe. I think, you know, there are, are there scenarios where he could win this election? Yes, there are scenarios, because Hillary Clinton is the ultimate, in my lifetime, the ultimate insider candidate in what is the ultimate outsider year. And that is her Achilles heel, and that is what she is trying to navigate. Now, Trump also, you know, his timing is better, his message is better. It's just a question of his persona. Uh, the, uh, the, it's the messenger, not the message in the, case, uh, in, in the case of Trump. In terms of the glass ceiling, I've been struck lately by the extent to which this, I mean, yes, this was a glass ceiling that was broken this week, first major party nominee who's female. And yet, it is not the kind of cultural moment that it was eight years ago when Barack Obama clinched the Democratic nomination at a similar point in early June. And you almost get the sense that when he broke that glass ceiling, it wasn't just the racial glass ceiling, it was multiple glass ceilings. For a whole lot of younger women, they're having, as Patty pointed out, a harder time identifying with Hillary, identifying uh, with, Hillary's, with Hillary's struggle and, and her career path. Um, I don't, David has history that I don't have, David has South American references I don't have, but his bottom line conclusion is not necessarily the wrong conclusion in terms of the abundant flaws of both of these candidates. It is the most distressing race of my, life, of my lifetime. Penn, who has the tougher job at unification, Trump or Hillary? Trump does. Um, and first, I think we do need to pay, give credit where credit is due. Hillary Clinton has made history by becoming the first um, nominee of a major party to, to be president. Um, contrary to David's um, observation, as I've said before, I think it's clear she has been the most qualified candidate in this entire election cycle. You've got a woman who's been first lady of a state, first lady of a country, a U.S. senator, a cabinet officer on top of her class from one of the most prestigious law schools in the country. She is no lightweight. She is a policy heavyweight. She is a bit of a policy wonk, and she understands how to navigate politics. For better or for worse, she can do those things. Um, I think she has an easier time bridging the gap with Bernie than Trump does with everybody else. Because, uh, you know, and, and I go back to the question you asked Eric, because that's how I analyze this. I'm aggravated with Trump for what I think are clearly racist comments he made about the judge. But I think it's calculated because what he doesn't want people to focus on is the underlying lawsuit. And he, 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 as ridiculous as you may feel his campaign has been up to this point, Americans need to ask themselves the fundamental question. Do you want a president who's been sued for swindling thousands of people? It's fraud, it's deception, it's theft, it's swindling. And what happens if this guy wins and he loses the lawsuit? Uh, you know, so the, the <laughs> country, it is just amazing that everybody's focusing on his comments about the judge, but I think he's sly as a fox. He's outrageous intentionally because he doesn't want you to focus on the underlying lawsuit, which is the real spooky part and which really reflects, in my opinion, the fundamentally flawed nature of Donald Trump as both a ca candidate and, quite frankly, as a man.